such an amazing love that a king, our king, would die for us. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Our God is worthy to be praised. What you are witnessing tonight, what your eyes, I mean this morning I should say, what you are witnessing at this point in time is history being unraveled right before your eyes. It is a privilege and an honour that we are here in this morning to witness these young souls, I may add, testifying to all that are present here and to those that are unseen that they will serve the Lord. It is a wonderful thing because in the history of our local church, we have not had such a wonderful number. And so we are overjoyed, as I've mentioned, to witness history ravel before our eyes. And like I said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He is so good to us. In this morning, I want to share a message that the Lord's put on my heart. And this is from John chapter 14 with 6. It's just that small verse where Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. But before this, Thomas asks him, and he says, I'm just going to quickly paraphrase in the verse before, but Lord, how are we going to know the way? The disciple says, how are we going to know the way? There are many people in this place, maybe, that might ask themselves, how do we know to go this way? How do we know or how can we find out this way? How do I know which way leads to salvation amongst everything that is in our midst, amongst all the religions, perhaps, that are be, uh, in front of us and this is the question we perhaps may ask ourselves let me illustrate you a little story perhaps maybe when you and your wife are traveling and you need to get to a place from a to b usually the guy's a little bit more confident so they say no it's fine we don't need anything i know the way and we'll get there so you start driving you get on your journey until you realize that they're taking a few more turns than they should. Uh, until you ask, are you okay? Do you know where you're going? Yeah, yeah, look, it's around here somewhere. I remember, I remember. Until finally he gives in and admits, okay, I'm kind of lost. I thought I knew, but I didn't really know the way. Okay, no problems. Let's bring up the GPS. You bring out a GPS. You plot in your location. It finds out where you are. And then what it does is it gives you alternative routes. You are here, you need to get there, this is your different way. Depending on traffic and so forth, you can choose your route. Now in life, we may think that just because we are lost, we can choose our own way. And that's not the case. I'm going to present to you in this morning a way that the Lord Jesus Christ says is the only way. There is no other way. It is not like the GPS which gives us different uh, ways to get there. There is but one. Um, And the first thing that I just want to mention is this first part. A lot of us, even as Christians, we miss it. Straight away when Jesus says, I am the way, I can guarantee you that probably 85% of Christians have already missed what Jesus is saying from the word I am. When Jesus is saying, I am, he, what is he saying? He's saying, I am God. I am God. I am your creator. When Moses, the man of God who God called, and he stood before God in that flaming bush, what happened? He said, he said to the Lord, Lord, what am I going to say if they ask me, what is your name? What is your name, God? Who are you called? What is it? And if you look in Exodus, in chapter 3, it mentions, I am who I am. I am that I am. 
And Jesus here relates and says the exact same thing. I am. Jesus is our saviour. He is our God trying to point us into the right direction. He is the way. He is not a way, a way that which we may think that there's other ways in this world to get to a certain point, but he is the only way to get to heaven, which is our Father. The problem is many of us, probably not us as Christians, but maybe many in the world think that uh, or have this analogy of this mountaintop where God is situated on the mountaintop and all the different religions are at the bottom. Now, each different religion at the end of the day has a general purpose to get to God. But that is not the case. We do not believe in such a thing. We believe that there is but one way that leads to heaven. If I asked you, how many of you want to spend the rest of your life in heaven? How many of you want to be happy, to no longer have tears in your eyes, to no longer have pain, to no longer have tribulation and tough times in your life? Many of you would say, yes, I want to have this life. And on the other hand, if I'd say, how many of you want to spend a life forever and ever in total damnation and pain? No one in their right mind would say, yeah, it is illogical. And yet, these two paths stand, stand before us. And we need to understand this. Peter, when he preaches in Acts chapter 2 with 12, he says, Salvation is found in no other name. The context, obviously, the name of Jesus. There is no other salvation in any other person but the Lord Jesus Christ himself. In fact, in uh, the Sermon on the Mount, he mentions and he talks about this way as being a narrow way. The calling that we have is a narrow way. It is not wide. It is not a free way. But it is a path led by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this path, if you look in Matthew 7 or 14, says it leads to life. How many of you want to have life? How many of you really want to live? I know sometimes we live life, but we don't want to just be dragged by life. Let us live our life. And Jesus is saying, if you want this life, if you want to be alive and no longer just thinking that you're alive, but genuinely to be alive, this is where we need to follow. This path, this narrow path leads to life. But the problem is, what does it say? Few who find it. Lord, I pray that the few are all of us. Lord, I pray that the few is your church. Lord, I pray that this few can be increased so that we can find this path that leads to life. Every single one of us wants to have eternal life, wants to have this time and you know, to, to go to heaven. But there is a condition there. Jesus, Jesus, in Luke chapter 9 with 23, he's very clear, says, whoever wants to follow me. How many of you put your hand up? Who wants to follow Jesus? We put our hand up. Praise the Lord. And he says, if you want to follow me, whoever so desires, Jesus does not force. Jesus did not force any of these people. Whoever so desires to follow me, let him deny himself. Let him take the cross and follow me daily. This message, we'll hear a lot more about tonight. So we hope that you do come tonight so you can listen to it. However, I want us just to think about this. This path, this narrow road is a path that we look to Jesus. That we fix our eyes on Jesus. That he is the vocal point. He is the center of our world that we look towards him. Because sometimes we can be so tempted to look with our head down. And maybe we walk that way that our head is down and we are worried and we are consumed and there's certain things that we can't get out of our mind. And God is saying, fix your eyes on me for I am the way. Look towards this way. Look towards this way. And yet deny yourself. Get rid of your flesh. Take up your cross. Live in an active life for the Lord Jesus. There's this example that some of you might have heard in a symbolic realm, every single Christian is given a cross. Every single Christian is given a cross. 
And so when they believe in Jesus, they carry this cross on their back. And they walk day after day after day until one day they see. And they see other Christians who say, this cross is too heavy. Let us cut part of it to make it lighter. So they cut the cross. They trim the cross. Now we can carry this burden. Now this cross has become bearable for us. Because we have modified it. We have done the things that pleases us. Instead of the things that please the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we go through life carrying this cross. And this person looks at another person who yet again down the track sees an even smaller cross. And continues and says, well, this person is going down this path. I want to shorten this as well. I want to make it easier even as well. And so what does he do? He trims the cross. Until one day, on the final day. Of his life, when he's about to cross over the great div- a great divide, a great fall, the only bridge to bridge this great divide is that cross that was untouched. Now, if me and you we change and we alter, how will we ever cross this great divide? Jesus set it straight. He is the way. There is no other way. Jesus set the standard for us. Jesus set the standard. He says very clearly, no one comes to the Father. No one has fellowship with the Father unless they come through Jesus Christ. Without Jesus, it is impossible. It is impossible, absolutely impossible. But you know what? Here... In this chapter, in John 14, with 4, it says, Believers know the way. Jesus made it possible for believers to know the way. He makes it possible for you and I to know this way, to walk down this way, to trust the Lord every step of our life. The second thing that he mentions here, he says, I am the truth. I am the truth. Very, very bold statement. Yet again, the only truth. When he talks about truth, he doesn't say truth as in a notion or a theory, but rather Jesus himself is the truth. He is truth. He is the word. He's the word. Now, let me explain to you something a little about truth. There are some truths that we cannot, that are absolute, we cannot negotiate with. We cannot say, I don't like this truth. Well, tough. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I don't like gravity. Well, so what if you don't like gravity? If you fall off, if you jump off your roof, you are going to go down. It is simple. Yet again, cause and effect. If you get angry and you're frustrated and you punch a wall, what is going to happen? You are going to hurt yourself. There are certain rules, there are certain truths that we cannot negate. That we cannot say, oh, I don't really agree with that. Jesus is perhaps even more than all of these. It is a non-negotiable. He is the truth. And John portrays him. He says, the word, which is the Lord Jesus, came down to earth. Came down to earth to help you and I. To strengthen you and I. To give a life to you and I. So that one day we can be in heaven with the Father. That is a wonderful privilege for everybody. This is not exclusive to just some race or to some people. The Word of God says, For God so loved the world that He gave His Son, His only Son. For God so loved the world. And this invitation spreads out to all of us to understand that Jesus is the Word. Now Jesus, when He's preaching in Matthew 5, 6 and 7 on the Sermon on the Mount, I don't know if you've picked this up, those of you that have perhaps read this passage, but Jesus refers and He says, You have heard it said. You have heard it said. In other words, you know that this is what the Word says. But I say to you, Whoa, 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 hang on a sec. Jesus, what do you mean? But I say to you, who do you think you are? And yet people missed it. 
And sometimes maybe even we can miss it. That the, the word of God, that Jesus is the son of God. And his word is life. Jesus' word is life. It brings life into you. It has the power to forgive your sins and to eradicate that old sinful life and restore you to a new creation. This truth and this power is in Jesus Christ. Now this truth that I'm speaking about is the, the truth of Jesus Christ. Now this truth is not just a theory. It's not just a notion. It's more than that. It's more than that. You know what it is? It is a personal. It is active. It is a relational and it's gracious. It's not just a theory. God is more interested in you than you think you know. God loves you more than you can ever imagine. And He wants you to realize this truth. He wants you to come to this understanding. Because without this understanding, because without knowing this truth, you can live your whole life to what purpose? To what purpose? Every single one of us, we have been called. We have been called by God. And God throws out the invitation. He hands out the invitation. But it depends what we do this. Because Jesus said, whoever so desires, whoever desires, whoever wants to have fellowship with God, whoever wants to go to heaven, it is an option. God does, does not force us into such a decision. And that's the beauty of God. Because He gives us free will we have the option to decide we have the choice to decide in John 8 with 32 he says you shall know the truth and the truth shall the truth shall set you free the truth shall set you free I don't know how free you feel you are but if you're living in sin and doing what you want the Bible is very clear in saying that you're in bondage, that you are in a jail. And the truth of God wants to take you out of this jail, wants to give you true freedom, wants to give you true freedom. And the option is do it now. Don't hesitate. The Bible says don't wait for tomorrow. Make a decision for the Lord. This is the truth that is very important for us to realize because he wants to liberate us. He wants to liberate us. And the third point is Jesus is the life. He's the life. Man, you ain't living till you live with Jesus. You ain't living till you live with Jesus. Some of us think we're living, but if we're not right with God, if we're not in the faith, we're not really living. And He wants to bring this truth to us. He wants to make us understand that He wants to give us a real life. Something worth more than what our eyes see in front of us. Ironic that we live this life for maybe 50, 60, 70 years, 80 years. Those strong, those strong excuse me. I heard recently today, uh, not today, uh, last week, of a Japanese uh, woman who uh, is celebrating 117th birthday. Some very strong, we may say. And her son is around 90, 92 or something. Some people live to even that great age, but the majority probably don't. This time that you have been given is worth gold. Because this time you can never come back with. How many times have I heard my own father say, Oh, the times. Where have they gone? And some of you are looking at me with that same stark look. Yes, where have they gone? Time has just flown by. It's as if we've blinked and now we're the age that we are at with our children, with our families. And yet, in this time, in this short time, if you can imagine infinity, we can't even imagine. It's a small fragment of here. This little decision you're going to make here in 60 years, which is somewhere over here in this corner, can jeopardize, can affect the whole of eternity. It's 50, 60, 70, 80 years. What is it in comparison to eternity? Nothing. You know the beauty about coming to the Lord Jesus Christ? When He gives you life, He doesn't only give you life here. He gives you life in heaven. He gives you eternal life. And that's such a wonderful thing to understand. 
Jesus mentioned when he makes a reference to, to himself as being the good shepherd in John 10, in 10, second part, he says, I have come that they may have life. I have come so that my believers, those who believe in me, can have life. And what? Have life abundantly. To be overflowing. To be, have such a life that it overflows out of you and it pours out into somebody else and becomes a blessing to somebody else. Lord will not only help you to have a true life in this life, presently, but you will have another life eternally with God. And that is such a wonderful promise. Such a wonderful promise. I'm going to just wrap it up with this little example. There's a story of two children who had to catch a bus every single day to, to school. The mother, very cautious of the fact that they were very young, decided to write a contact telephone number and an address and said, take this little note and put it in your pocket. And gave this note to the younger of the siblings, I think it was a daughter, and have it with you at all times just in case you get lost, just in case. And they went on their way, they went to school, and they had to come back. When they came back, the inevitable happened. They took the wrong bus. They ended up getting lost. They ended up getting lost. But the girl remembered something. She got out of this bus and for some reason, very deliberate, started going, walking some miles, quite accurately, to almost where her house was. She was quite bold to do this. When they finally got home, the mother was worried. She was stressed out completely. She didn't know what to do. She had phoned the police and they'd looked for, for the two. And yet she asked her and she said this. How did you find your way back? How did you find your way back? The little girl said, we live right next to a big church. On that church, there is a very big cross. And I just followed the cross till I got home. Many of us, we get lost in life's travels. And the simple fact is we need to follow the cross. When you are lost in the world, keep your eyes on the cross. When troubles come your way, keep your eyes on the cross. When you don't know which way to go, keep your eyes on the cross. When you can't tell which way is left or right, keep your eyes on the cross. Jesus is the way, the only way that we may find salvation. He is the only truth that wants to empower you, that gives you power in, in word and in spirit. And he is the only life that is given to you in this life and in the next. Make a decision to grab hold of this life. Make a decision to make Jesus your happiness. God bless you.